Hi, I'm Kate Robbins, sitting in for Nick Coffer all week. And it's my second day and I'm enjoying myself intensely. Uh, and even immensely. Now, have you ever suffered from the dread of speaking in public? Um, Dee Clayton is in the studio with me and I'm very happy to say hi to you. Dee, and you are a motivational speaker. And can you please help us to, uh, to find out how, where do we start to get some... So, well, well, confidence to, to, to speak publicly. Well, I think that's exactly the right point. So, hello, not lovely to meet you. And I think that's exactly the point is confidence. So, so many people are scared of speaking and it holds them back from achieving what they really want to in life. Yes. And you, um, you have a book and uh, your book is called Taming Your Public Speaking Monkeys, which is a fantastic title, <laughs> which is, you know, building confidence for public speaking and presentations. And, and you, you know, I know you're a multi-award winning um, woman and uh, it, it's fascinating to meet somebody who's, who makes a living and enjoys, I presume, um, teaching people how to sort of, to, to, you know, speak. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely job, yeah. I mean, the main thing that motivates me is seeing people when they come into me and they're nervous about speaking, they have the monkey voices, as I call them, the public speaking Yeah, why, do you, why do you use the word monkey? Well, um, often, I don't know if you've sort of had it in the past, people talk about gremlins. I don't know if you've heard of that before, yes. and these nasty gremlins. It's a are negative in your head. word, isn't and it? And already you're worried about gremlins. They sound terrible. I can't think of a picture of a, a nice gremlin in my head. So I uh, came up with the approach of the public speaking monkeys because I was working with some children once, and a, well, a family. I was helping a whole family to overcome their fear, and I thought, how can I communicate this to children? Can I just ask you, interject there, you were helping a, an entire family to overcome a fear of... Public speaking, yeah, absolutely. The, what happened was the mum came to me and said, oh, my uh, son and daughter would like some help. And um, the way I work is that it's a, it's a family unit. So I wouldn't help, um, ideally, my idea is not helping the children on their own because even if they got massive confidence, they might come to the dinner table one day and say, I'm really looking forward to my uh, speech yes. tomorrow at school. And then if mum or dad say, well, uh, aren't you scared? You've already put loads of you know negative yes, thoughts back course. in the head accidentally we all do this accidentally all of the time so but don't you a lot of it's to do with um the situation somebody's in i mean you can have a very extrovert person in the pub for example who's a bit loud mouthed and a bit funny and telling stories anecdotal you know and a bit full of chardonnay that always full helps of chardonnay. <laughs> but then you put that person at a wedding and they've got to stand up and make the speech and they dry up they completely lose their nerve because it's suddenly everyone is listening, isn't it? It's because everybody's sat quietly listening as opposed to a raucous background in the pub. You know what I mean? So is it to do with people knowing they have an audience that makes them go to pieces? Well, it or depends. I mean, uh, good question. I mean, basically, people have different monkeys, so it depends what their public <laughs> speaking monkeys are. Some people have a fear of everybody looking at them, so they'd have a little monkey voice in their head going, everyone's looking at you. And everyone's that, looking at me. Everyone's looking at me. <laughs> and that might be the <laughs> wedding scenario. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've had some female clients tell me that uh, before they've worked with me that they would never want to get married because they don't want to be the bride yes. with everyone looking at them and, and that's holding them back. Now, I mean, you must have trained in some sort of psychology and I know you are um, an NLP um, person and um, that's a neuro-linguistic programmer. Yeah, not many people know what NLP is. No. Um, Can you so tell us what neuro-linguistic programming actually means? Um, well, it's basically a study uh, of all best practice that works. So in the 70s, uh, two people got together and and studied what works in in different fields and so I like to think of it as a mix of all these different techniques and it's based on a lot on modeling so they look at successful people see the habits that successful people have and kind of teach you those habits but neuro meaning from the brain yeah and linguistic obviously from 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 the word yeah and the programming being how we respond to things so we all naturally respond to things in different ways yes. and if we think some people have a connection between public speaking and then immediately go their programming tells them to panic and what the public speaking monkeys is about is to make sure we change that programming so that actually you could at least go public speaking oh at least i'll be okay and yes. ideally going yeah. yes i can't wait to get out there and promote my business well if anybody out there is um would like to you know ask a question of d about you know to do with public speaking maybe you've got a wedding or something you want to speak at do contact us oh eight four five nine four double five five double five the text is um begin your text with three cr and it's eight one three double three d I, I think sometimes with people it must be a lot to do with how somebody's been brought up or psychologically how they've been affected as a child um 
because we all know that the, sh the shy children at school um, don't always go on to be shy adults, do they? No, and it can be um, often, mon some monkeys can be caused by things that happened at school. So even a teacher... <laughs> I love the way you're just using this word. <laughs> some monkeys can be... <laughs> well, I mean, I that's know the point, isn't it? If you can already laugh at your problem before you've even started, we've got to be mm. on to a winner. So you're already changing the way that people think about public speaking by making them laugh if they think of these funny little monkeys they already but get a little bit average better. people in the street don't have to publicly speak do they i mean a lot of people never ever have to make a speech in their life yes and that's probably how most people go hmm. on with their lives and the people that i work with are those that have to do it in order to fu uh, further their career so it might be that they've got a job interview coming up i, oh, I see you're not talking about sorry to interrupt you you're not talking about um just speeches you're talking about just talking basically yep talking communicating presentations at work so they might have to present to the customer or they might have to present over the telephone these days you might go for an interview all those kind of things where you're actually judged rightly or wrongly mm. if you, you could be the best marketing director in the world but if you do a bad presentation they're going to assume that you're not good at your job so d are you ever helping these dreadful people who ring you up going hello uh, mrs robbins uh, yeah my name's brian i'm just how are you today and so uh, i was just wondering you know and they, <laughs> they're very confident ringing you up cold callers where do they get their confidence from with those dreadful <laughs> speeches they do down the phone trying to sell you something have they been taught that um they have yeah they've learned that skill they're naturally it's confident. a script one in or, front of them or is the it? Other. yes yeah. but you know those cold calls are only bad if we don't want them if they're in the middle of tea yes. time for something we never want to buy. Oh, I'm always quite polite, you know. I mean, I, I, I know they're doing a job, but it is irritating if you're cooking, <laughs> cooking dinner and you get one. But yeah, exactly. I always think that they're very confident, those people. Absolutely. And they've been chosen for that job because they can speak. Yeah, and that's a, that's a sort of sales technique. And, and more importantly, a lot of smaller businesses do need to phone people in order to get their work. And I've helped a few clients to have the confidence to phone and not necessarily do a big sales pitch down the phone, but just be themselves. That's yes. all I want them to be. They're perfectly successful business people when they yes. aren't stood up talking. Yes. And your knees aren't related to your voice box. So just because you stand <laughs> up shouldn't mean you suddenly get all scared. I like that. Your knees aren't related to your voice box. I hope we don't get a doctor phoning in saying somehow they are. Actually, they are, do you? <laughs> yeah, we get that. We get that um uh, what's the uh, the mute the a what? tune that's on, isn't there? Knee bone and thigh bone. And the knee bone yeah, the knee bone's connected to the thigh bone. That's the one. <laughs> um, but I think that uh, there are certain types of kids at school when you're growing up that, you know, there, there's the gobby ones, as we used to say in Liverpool, and there's the, the, the ones who are shy. And there's people who, when they walk into a room, would rather die rather than have to speak or look at some stranger. I'm not one of those people. I've always been fine. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> because I was brought up, um, my mum and dad moved house a lot when I was a little girl, and I was always changing schools, always being put into new environments, so nothing phases me in that yeah, respect. Yeah. A lot of other things phase me. You've got me. to say you're probably the exception rather than the rule. I though. am the exception rather than the rule. And, and I do see a lot of friends, you know, who... who I know to be funny, aspirational, you know, motivational people in their work and take them to a party where they don't know anybody and they, they clam up. Mm, you absolutely. Know. And in business, you need to be able to do not necessarily the parties, but certainly networking. You know, business doesn't just fall on your lap, lap these days. I think in the olden no, days, it doesn't, solicitors does it? and accountants would mm. just expect the work to come in. And now you've got to work pretty hard to say why you're better than the next person and the next person. And, and often the professional people aren't used to doing that. They aren't used to selling themselves. Yeah. Do you have little techniques you can give people um, in terms of tricks? I mean, when I say that, I mean, like, for example, it, I, I, uh, one thing I taught my kids, they say, if you're on the phone to somebody and you don't want to talk anymore, but you don't want to be impolite, you say to them, I'll let you go now. <laughs> Very good. Right, because what you're doing is it's positive and you're saying yeah, to them, excellent, I, like I will let you go because Very you're good. a busy yes. person. Yeah. And it's what I call a trick, but it's also a way of going, I want to get off this phone call, but I don't want to sound rude. Yeah. Is that is that naughty or is that okay? Oh, that that's brilliant to me. No, I think you've got an I'll let you sorted. go now. <laughs> no, um, I, I often the main thing for me is to get your monkey sorted. So um, <laughs> that's got to be the first step. To oh, be honest. this book looks fantastic. Taming your public speaking monkeys by D. Clayton. And we're going to be talking a little bit more to D. Clayton after we have a little bit of dig that. <laughs> 